Chunze Dakpa Sando is a Buddhist monk. He fled Tibet in 1959 after Chinese troops forcibly took control of the country. Chunze, then 16, came with his spiritual teacher, Kenso Rinpoche, a former abbot of Drepung Monastery. For the next 30 years, he was Kenso Rinpoche's personal attendant and closest disciple. Since Kenso Rinpoche's death four years ago, Chunze has been searching for his reincarnation. Each morning, Chunze makes the traditional water offering in front of Kenso Rinpoche's altar. For four years, he has looked after the room, keeping it ready for the day his master returns. Kenso Rinpoche died on the night of 30th June, 1985. When he passed away, we were really sad, because when we came to India, he was my teacher. He was like a father to me. It was only because of him that I left Tibet. And he was kind enough to bring me with him. We lived together for many years and he became twice as close to me as my own parents. That's why, when he died so suddenly, it really upset me. Hey, you know, that's it. I seen the baby for the last. But then again, he was very old when he died, and we were sure he would be reincarnated. That made me feel much better. Chunze's long wait for his master's reincarnation may soon be over. A few months ago, a letter arrived unexpectedly from Tibet addressed to the abbot of Drepung. <laughs> The letter was about a little boy who displayed special signs. During his birth, the mother had a vision of the national oracle, who told her that she should take good care of her son. The little boy was gentle in nature. He liked to say prayers and was particularly fond of monks. The letter asked the abbot if there was a possibility that this child was a reincarnate lama. The abbot showed me the letter. He was surprised to have received it, as he didn't know the center personally. 
He said, maybe this boy is the reincarnation of our master and suggested that we consult the Dalai Lama. The letter has been kept a secret from all but the closest of Kensa Rinpoche's disciples. Chen Se is afraid that if the Chinese authorities discovered its contents, they would prevent any effort to bring the boy out of Tibet. The abbot of Drepung has already left for Dharamsala, the Dalai Lama's home in North India, to inform him about the boy in Tibet. Chen Se is on his way to join him. His friend, Karma, accompanies him to the nearest railway station. I wish I could find the reincarnation quickly. There is so much that has to be done for him. But if we don't find him soon, and another four or five years pass, then I will become old. And when you are old, even if you want to, you can't do much. It gets difficult. of the Dalai Lama's government in exile. Here in India, the Tibetan refugees have maintained their culture and kept alive their aspirations for the independence of Tibet. Tibetans believe that high lamas can choose to be reincarnated in order to help others attain spiritual enlightenment. They are referred to as Rinpoches, the precious ones. Before the Chinese occupation, there were over 3,000 reincarnate lamas. Now some 500 survive, mostly in exile. There is no prescribed method for recognizing a reincarnate lama. The process involves a combination of dreams and omens, divinations performed by high lamas, and the council of oracles. Based on this information, the most likely candidate is selected. Chunze accompanies the abbot and a few close disciples to meet the Dalai Lama. For Chunze, an audience with the Dalai Lama is a rare and precious occasion. The Dalai Lama is considered by Tibetans to be the 14th reincarnation of the Buddha of Compassion. He has been presented with a petition requesting him to come to a decision about the boy in Tibet.
Tam, tam, tam. Tam si čekáme. The official medium prepares for the trance during which the Nechung Oracle will possess him. Tibetans believe that the Nechung Oracle is one of their guardian spirits, an emissary from a world invisible to humans. For many centuries, he has been the chief oracle of Tibet, regularly consulted on matters of both state and religion. has been specially requested by Drepung Monastery. Among other matters, the question of Kenso Rinpoche's reincarnation will be put to him secretly by the abbot. <coughs> high-pitched answers of the oracle are recorded by a trained attendant who will later present them in a formal letter to the abbot. I'm really happy today. Before it wasn't clear where the reincarnation was. But now that both the Dalai Lama and the Nation Oracle have confirmed his identity, there is no longer any doubt in my mind.
The Dalai Lama and the Oracle have also told us to perform some prayer ceremonies. But other than that, going to Tibet and trying to bring the boy out, that's not possible right now. Now it's definite that the reincarnation is there, and basically I'm happy. But despite my happiness, I can't tell you when we will be able to bring him to India. So my mind is not completely at rest. We can't go there, and they can't come here. For the moment, we are helpless. But if the border opens up and we are allowed to enter, then I'm sure we will be able to bring him out. As a Tibetan refugee, Shenze needs permission from the Chinese authorities to visit his own country. Following pro-independence demonstrations in Tibet, the Chinese have imposed martial law and, for the moment, closed the border. A few months later, travel restrictions were eased in Tibet. Applying under the pretext of visiting his family, Chunze was granted a permit. He quietly left for Tibet in September 1990. For three months, there has been no news of him.
Chunse's friend, Kalma, has been in Kathmandu, awaiting his return from Tibet. Kalma has just heard that both Chunze and the young reincarnation have arrived safely in Kathmandu. He is on his way to see them for the first time. Karma greets the young Rinpoche with the traditional white scarf. White scarves are universally used by Tibetans as a symbol of goodwill and respect. A monastery in Kathmandu has heard of the young lama's arrival. The monks have invited him to receive his blessing. This is the boy's first religious event in his new role as a high reincarnate lama. He is four years old.
The abbot makes the traditional long life offering, objects symbolizing the body, speech, and mind of a Buddha. The first time we went to his home, he looked at our faces carefully. Then he came to me and gave me a hug. I felt he was definitely Mr. Rinpoche's reincarnation. His face and his nose, there was a strong resemblance to his former self. Then he went into another room and brought out two scarves. He put one around his own neck, one around his mother's, and one around his father's. So we told the parents, your son is letting you know that he is leaving you. He is saying goodbye. We joked with them about it, and they also laughed with us. We left Tibet a long time ago, so when I went back, I found that all the old monasteries and buildings had gone. New buildings had come up, and the place was unrecognizable. There were Chinese soldiers with guns on the rooftop all around the central temple in Lhasa. And since we were there on a special mission, we couldn't relax. Our minds were not at ease. And even the people living there, although they seemed to have enough to eat and drink, there was a sense of fear and anxiety about the future. There in Hassa, people weren't happy. So suddenly, being back in Tibet, I was sad and heartbroken. That's how I felt. After two weeks in Kathmandu, Chunze and Kama bring the young Rinpoche to the important Buddhist town of Sarnath. 
They will meet the Dalai Lama, who is here to give religious teaching. This is an important place of pilgrimage for us. Before we left for Tibet, the Dalai Lama told us to try and come back in time for these teachings. I think he felt that this would be an auspicious time for Rinpoche to meet here and to perform the hair offering ceremony. So we made sure that we got here on time. As news of the boy's presence spread, disciples of Kensho Rinpoche come to pay their respects and receive his blessing. Chunze has finally received word that their audience with the Dalai Lama is set for tomorrow. <laughs> During the meeting, the Dalai Lama will cut off a lock of hair from the boy's head and give him a new name to symbolize his entry into monastic life. <laughs>
Chunze's work in Sarnap is now over. Before they make the long journey south to Drekum, he brings the young Rinpoche to the great stupa. Near this spot, 2,500 years ago, the Buddha gave his first teaching. <laughs> It's been about a month now since Rinpoche and I have lived together. And unlike with others, he seems specially fond of me. Before we found the reincarnation, I had no special responsibility. I could come and go as I pleased. I had some monastery work and my own personal studies. But now that he has come, it's like I've become the father of a child. I don't have any time to myself. So I'm really a father now. If I go out and he's alone in his room, I start to worry. I'm afraid that he might come out of his room and something might happen to him. I get anxious. 
He is young now, but he has to live up to the example of his former self. He has to begin his studies, modern subjects, and of course, Buddhist philosophy. So we have a great responsibility ahead of us.
two months apart since Tenzin Tensei left his parents behind in Tibet. They will visit him if the Chinese authorities allow them to leave. When the boy is a little older, Chunsei will find a spiritual master under whose guidance the young Rinpoche will begin his Buddhist studies. These will occupy him for the best part of 20 years. Between Hinsu Rinpoche and me, I think our relationship goes beyond this present lifetime. I really believe that it stems from many lifetimes. It's like his body has changed, but inside the same consciousness has come. So however much I serve his former self, I'm doing the same for him now. Layat Parang. 